Short exercise 3-6. We're going to prepay rent, and then later, as it is used up, we're going to enter the adjusting entry to show that the prepaid rent is going down and rent expense is going up. So on April 1st, All Star of Toledo prepaid six months of rent for $4,200. The requirements are we're going to record the journal entry for the April 1st payment. Then we're going to record the adjusting entry at the end of the month to show that some of it has been used up. And then we're going to post to our T accounts to show what the balance is of the prepaid rent account. So requirement one, record the journal entry for the April 1st payment. So up here, we paid $4,200 for six months of rent. So that means each month of rent must be worth 700 bucks. But on April 1st, we're gonna be spending $4,200. And since we paid six months of rent, we know cash is involved. So is cash going up or is cash going down? Well, cash is an asset and cash is going down. So cash is going to be credited. And remember, we have to record the debits first, then the credits. So the second line is going to be our credit account. Cash is going down. Now, for this first account, a lot of students want to record it as an expense. But has this prepaid rent been used up? As of April 1st, it's worth $4,200. So it is a, it has a future value, I should say. So therefore, it is an asset. And what will that asset be called? Prepaid rent. And is this asset going up or is it going down? The asset is going up, therefore it is the debit. You also know it has to be the debit because we've already got a credit and we know our debits must equal our credits. So we got prepaid rent. To record rent paid in advance. All right. So let's just get back up here to April 1st. So on April 1st, that prepaid rent had a value of $4,200. On the very next day, is it still technically worth $4,200? No, it's worth $1, or excuse me, one day less of that prepaid rent. So if we had no life, every day we could adjust this account downwards as it's being used up. But people don't have that much time. So what we're going to do as accountants is we're going to wait till at least the end of the month or maybe the end of the year to adjust our account so that it is so that the balance of the account is correct. So it is now April 30th. So we're going to record the adjusting entry required as of April 30th. So our records say that we have $4,200 worth of prepaid rent on April first, but is a month later. So do we still have six months of rent inside, inside this uh, account? Do we have six months worth of rent in the prepaid rent account? No, we should have one month's worth less. So how much is one month's worth? Well, we take $4,200 divided by the six months. So that gives us $700 that is being used up. So let's think about this prepaid rent account. Since some of it is being used up and it's an asset account, as it's being used up, is it going to increase or is it going to decrease? Well, obviously, it's going to decrease. So prepaid rent is going to be credited because it's going down for the $700. And of course, we have to record debits first. So the credit goes on the second line, prepaid rent is going down by 700 bucks. Now, we need an, a debit account for the $700. So as we use up the prepaid rent, the rent expense is increasing. And expenses increase on the left side. So that makes sense why we're going to debit rent expense. To record rent expense. Cool. Now your boss comes to you and says, well, we're going to make a balance sheet. And to make the balance sheet, we need all of our assets. So we need to know how much is in that prepaid rent account. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to post all of these transactions to the ledger. And the ledger is going to be in the form of these T accounts. So we have a T account for prepaid rent, and we have a T account for rent expense. So it says using T accounts, post a journal entry and adjusting entry to the accounts involved and show their balance at April 30th. So what we're trying to do is figure out, well, what's the balance of these two accounts at the end of the month? And for whatever reason, they're saying ignore cash. So obviously in the real world, we would have a cash account. We would have to post there too. So the way we post is we start at the top and we work our way down. So on April 1st, we're going to debit prepaid rent, $4,200. Here's prepaid rent, $4,200 debit on April 1st. So we scroll back up. We would normally post cash, but for whatever reason, they are saying ignore the cash account. So now we're going to go down here to rent expense, $700 debit on April 30th. So rent expense, $700 debit on April 30th. And then we've got prepaid rent, which is going down $700 as a credit. So I'm going to go to prepaid rent. And on the credit side, I'm going to put $700 April 30th. And then, of course, if we're posting, we need to do balances. And it's reminding you to enter BAL. For the balance. So what's the balance of prepaid rent? So remember, prepaid rent is an asset. So we got $4,200 on the plus side, and then we have $700 on the minus side. So $4,200 minus $700 gives us a balance of $3,500 as of the end of the month. Now we need to figure out the rent expense balance. Well, obviously, now remember, rent, ex rent expense is an expense. So the left side is a plus side. The right side is the minus side. So we have $700 debit balance for rent expense. So when the boss is going to do the financial statements or ask you to do the financial statements, when we do the balance sheet, we need to list our assets. Prepaid rent is the asset. And on April 30th, the prepaid rent account is only worth $3,500, not the $4,200. The $4,200 is what it was worth on April 1st. It is now April 30th, and we've used up $700 of that prepaid rent. So we only have a balance of $3,500. And when we go to do the income statement, remember income statement is revenue minus expense. So we would need to list this rent expense of $700 for the month of April. And that's it. Don't forget to do the part two, the one with the random numbers.